Modular arithmetic was taught in maths lessons when I was at school, but since then it seems to have fallen from favour, even though it's a very um, powerful programming technique. So uh, what is it? Well, it's a, an arithmetic technique. It's a technique to do with division. So if um, you divide, say 10 divided by 4, uh, certainly since you've been at secondary school, um, what you'll expect is a decimal. 2.5. Um, however, if you remember back to when you first learned to divide at primary school, you wouldn't have uh, come up with a decimal answer. What you'd have done is you'd have said, well, 4 fits into 10 twice and there's 2 left over. So that we would have called that the remainder and our answer would have been 2 remainder 2. So that's really what modular arithmetic is. Rog modular arithmetic is division with remainders, but where we're particularly interested in the remainder. So that might sound a little bit strange, um, but let's have a look at some practical examples. So if the, the operator in Python uh, to find the, the, what, the modulo, the remainder, is the percent symbol. So if I did 10% 4, that gives me 2. So that means when I divide 10 by 4, the remainder is 2. And uh, if we try some other examples, so 10, if we divide that by 5, we get a remainder of 0. So why is that useful? Well, it's particularly useful where things repeat. So for example, imagine now it's 10 o'clock, and um, what time is it going to be in 4 hours? So we could do a calculation. So 10 plus 4 is 14, but 14 isn't on the clock. So what do we do about that? Well, uh, what we can do is if we do 10 plus 4, so the starting time plus the duration, if you like, and then we divide that by 12 and find the remainder, that gives us 2. So if it's 10 o'clock now, in 4 hours' time, it will be 2 o'clock because the clock goes round. Effectively, what we're doing is we're dividing the time by 12 and taking the reminder. So taking the remainder. So where things go round in a cycle, um, we can use the remainder to see uh, how far we've gone round again effectively. Uh, similarly with um, angles. So if we're facing you know, 350 degrees and we turn clockwise 20 degrees, we end up pointing... 370 degrees. So if we wanted to find out what where that would really be on the compass, we can do 350 plus 20 and we can uh, divide that by 360 and see what the remainder is. And that would tell us our new uh, bearing, if you like. So um, it's very useful for things that repeat and it's something that we probably do, take for granted, without thinking about it. So uh, it's useful for that kind of thing. It's also useful for obviously finding whether numbers are um, multiples of a particular value because if a number is a multiple of a particular value then the remainder will be zero when we divide. So one thing we could do with this is find out whether numbers are odd or even. So if I do uh, for n in range 10 so if you don't know about uh, the for loop in Python, have a look at my repetition video. Uh, and what we're going to do is I've got to just print. So I'm going to uh, print the original number, n. And then I'm going to print n uh, divided by 2. And we'll have a look at the remainder. So n modulo 2. So if we run that, what we'll see is um, it goes uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, up to 9. The remainder is only one of two possible values. So the number of possible remainders is the same as the number you're dividing by. So that's very useful uh, when we're cycling th through things. So if you've got uh, you know, five options, and we, uh, we, if you do um, a division by five and find the remainder, then you can have, you can, you can have those five options. They'll be numbered uh, 0 to 4. So we can do that uh, quite easily. If we wanted to do the same thing with, um, say, which numbers were divisible by 5, for example. Obviously, we might need to go a little bit further. So if we go up to 30, um, we can see that the remainder, which is the second column, uh, goes up to 4, and then it starts again. So it cycles through five possible values uh, between 0 and the, that maximum value, minus 1. So that's, that's very useful. Um, how can we use that? Well, um, 
here's a kind of practical example, as well as checking for multiples and other mathematical things. Uh, what about if you wanted to put people into teams? So when you're at school, I'm sure you had this kind of thing. So if we had uh, a, a, a list, or it would, we'll have a tuple because it's only used for reference. We're not going to change it. So we've got some people. Uh, so Tom, Dick, Harry, uh, Rita. Doesn't really matter how many there are. Sue, oops, and let's have one more, uh, Bob, okay, and then we're going to have some teams, so this is a bit like when you're in PE and you used to stand in a line, or you're at a kind of conference and you need to be put in teams, and they go along going one, two, three, one, two, three, or A, B, C, A, B, C, so I'm going to have some teams as well, um, so let's just call those for ease of typing, uh, A, B, and C. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop through all of the people and put them in a team. Now I could say for person, you know, I could use a for just um, to find the elements of the list, but because we're going to do a mathemat a numerical mathematical kind of calculation, I'm going to use the index rather than the actual value. So I'm going to say for i in range, and then I'm, going to, I'm just going to make this flexible. So I'm not going to hard code the length of the string. I'm going to say the length of person uh, and that way I can just um, adapt my program by altering the length of the tuples rather than having to recode it and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that number and I'm going to use it as an index for the team so per Tom is going to be person 0 and he's going to go in team A Dick is person 1 he's going to go in team B Harry is, go, is going to be person two, and he's going to go in team C. Uh, but what, what about when we get to Rita? Well, we've got three teams. So if we use uh, a modulus, uh, um, which is the length of the team, that will help us to ensure that the index is converted into a number um, 0, 1, or 2, so it matches uh, the length of the team. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just print. Uh, so we're going to have the person. So person... Uh, I, so for the first time around that will be Tom, uh, and then we're going to put uh, is in team, so we'll have some text to show what it's doing, and then we're going to say team, and we're going to use I, but we're going to divide it by uh, the length of the team, and use that as the modulus, so find out the remainder. So when we get to Rita, she's person 3. So when we divide uh, 3 by 3, we get uh, a 0 remainder, because 3 is exactly divisible by 3. So she's back to team A. So let's have a look at uh, whether this works. And there you go. So Tom is in team A, Dick is in team B. When we go around to Rita, she's back in team A. And if we add more people, it doesn't matter. So it's just a coincidence that I've got a multiple of three people. Uh, so if I add another person, uh, Barry, uh, and maybe another one, uh, Dave, then and I run it. I don't need to amend the rest of my program because I'm, I'm using len person rather than the fixed number. And if I change the number of teams, it'll also cope. So if I have just the two teams, it'll alternate. And if I have uh, you know, add an extra team, uh, it'll cope with that as well. So modular arithmetic, it's a division. It tells you the remainder. That's very useful for anything that cycles uh, or repeats. And it's useful for things. It's also, it's also useful if you have a look at my um, Caesar shift um, cipher example. When you shift the Z, for example, uh, if you shift all the letters one place, you don't want that to go off the end of the alphabet. You want to wrap that right round back to the start. So Z becomes A when you shift it one place. So it's also uh, very useful for things like that.